morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had an amazing trading day yesterday. We are getting ready to roll on a Tuesday morning, May the 8th, 2017. And uh, uh, did not get a video out yesterday morning because there wasn't any substantial changes from the weekend edition, although we did trade up into some uh, some some selling uh, potential selling areas in the nasdaq and the s p which we'll talk about today so if you're new to the channel do me a favor make sure you click that subscribe button down below and if you're not new to the channel make sure you tell somebody else about the channel so they can click the subscribe button down below uh try to spread the word all right let's go ahead and roll and dive right in look at the s p so looking at the es now we had this little reversal period right here and i said yesterday uh on a tweet just be aware of where your stop losses are this did go through uh the little area that we had identified for potential reversal uh, and is starting to make its move down now this area if you look at it was literally a uh, point and a half in length so the idea is is that i take a really small shot and if i if i get stopped out i get stopped out uh, and that's really kind of what's happened. Now, the NASDAQ trade, on the other hand, has not been stopped out. It was a bit wider of an area, and it's continued a, a little bit of a move down. So it's definitely got a bit of weakness that's been built into it. Now, if you are uh, looking at what to do today, uh, we do have, you know, on an hourly chart, technically a little bit of a downward, uh, a downward move right through here where we can connect some of these tops. Now, Interestingly enough, it is kind of pinching a little bit on its uh, on its downward move, which could signal a breakout. And typically, that's actually a bullish setup when it's pinching that way, as it's just kind of resetting. Now, looking at the Nasdaq, we have a potential reversal point right down here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash and line this area for the Nasdaq because this is a potential reversal point Oops, put the wrong drawing tool in there this does become a potential reversing point in the nasdaq where we have these levels kind of there's two of them kind of stacked on top of each other but i'm going to use uh, i'm going to use the top one simply because it is a former resistance resistance, 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 which could become broken and act as new support. So I'm gonna wrap my lines around this area here for a potential reversal right in here. And if you're still short, this may be where you wanna take your profits uh, off of the level up above. Now, uh, I am putting a dashed line in it because I feel like there's still room for it to fall a bit lower. But as far as what we have now, that's a pretty decent setup. Um, if you are more of the ilk that you you know you want to be bearish, then you're going to have to you know you could theoretically get short at one of these little reversal areas up here uh, on a retest up to this region. I'm a little bit more ilk of staying on the bullish side at that secondary area, being short until it gets down into that region, uh, and then getting long as it comes back out. So. Like I said, not a whole lot of great movement out of this upper upper uh, upper selling area. I'm actually going to remove this line now, so because uh, we can't use this one again as we traded too deep into it. Looking at the four hour chart on the Nasdaq, <clears throat> on the four hour time period, you know we've still got an area a uh, fair degree above us, way up in here, that is going to take some time for us to, to for price to return back into, uh, but we could get there, and and this is. This is setting up for potential strength uh, coming back out of it. The NASDAQ looks stronger on the four hour chart than the S&P does, simply because the NASDAQ put in an all time high after its late January. After its late January drop, the S&P still has not. Uh, we don't have yet still that higher swing high uh, on the four hour chart, still waiting on that higher swing high on the four hour chart in the S&P as we're still in that bigger uh, triangle pattern, if you will. Uh, here at the top. So looking for today, potential reversal point down a little bit below us. Crude oil. So crude oil, uh, I think a couple of months ago, I talked about the potential for crude to go to 80. Um, now we're sitting around 70. I think that we could get a bit of a pullback. Uh, and if we do get a bit of a pullback, I'm going to look into this area here as a as a good uh, as a good potential reversal. 
Uh, I like that we had a little bit of sideways before a very strong move right here. And, and this area acted as a resistance line in the past. So price could break down into here and get us an opportunity. Now, if you're more ilk to the day trading side, you could short it uh, on its way down to that region for you that are day traders below this 69.50 area. So from 69.50 down to 68.75, there's probably some room to uh, to make a little make a little cheese, if you will. Uh, gold. Looking at our gold markets, we are still in between our two areas in GC. So there's no reason to force anything as of now. Let's move over to bonds and currencies. So in our bond market, um, bonds is another one that's kind of uh, sitting around and a little choppy. Still a lot of concern about what's happening uh, with Europe, although we did finally get a little bit of a breakdown in some of our other currencies, given a strength in the dollar, uh, and we broke below an important level. Now that break has to uh, we've got to see something happen in the bonds to see if there's going to be any true follow through. For now, I'm going to let the bonds be. I don't want to put something in that's going to be kind of forcing a trade. But when you're trading in this tight of a range, I mean, this is really, you know, as I like to say, tough sledding. Uh, looking at the Aussie. So in the Aussie, uh, we, we uh, could have drawn a line down here for a breakout short. I didn't get a chance to. I thought about recording last night to, to kind of lay this in here. Uh, this is a, a good setup for a breakout short. So hopefully some of you are able to see that and catch that one on your own as it's continuing its move down. Um, same thing with the Euro as the Euro gave us this rally back up and then now it's sold off pretty hard over the last couple of hours. And so all of those, um, looking at them on a bigger picture time period, at our quote unquote Goliath chart, um, you know, you're you're still going to have this is just a, a continuous downward trend and that downward trend. There's no reason to for us to see that that thing's going to get any better. Sorry about that. Too deep. Uh, looking at this on the daily chart, uh, I think that there's plenty of room for this thing to keep falling down into this region. We've broken below here. Uh, I think that we, we may not stop until all the way down here. So if you're in this short in the euro, good stay in it there's no reason yet to get out just move your stop and manage it accordingly uh, as it's continuing its march if you're not in it and you want to wait for a retest you might get a retest of this area here so potential for the retest of this area here but this is why I, I think somebody had typed in the comments one day that they don't like to do breakouts the problem is, is that if you missed the breakout here which we talked about this as a potential breakout. You never got a chance at a retest. Um, if you missed the breakout here, you've never gotten a chance at a retest. Um, and so now I'm afraid that if you miss the breakout here, we're not going to get a chance at a retest. So we will see uh, if it comes back in. And I say never. It's still this, those are still very viable areas up above us. Uh, in the Canadian dollar, we finally had price come down into our reversal point. But guess what? It blew right through it. Now this is where the dashed line is. A valuable tool. Uh, we had the setup down here as a potential reversal, uh, but price came into the level and blew right through it. So not triggering the entry. Now remember, this is the way to set these up to for the triggers is to have a stop, a contingent order that turns it on if it comes into a certain point, and then a stop limit to get long as it comes back out. And then if it goes through the contingent order, and then it should be a cancel if it goes below. And that's how you can set those up ahead of time. Now, uh, as far as what we have today, you might have to come all the way back to, um, you're gonna put a line around this area here if we get a retest for a potential reversal uh, right up there. Nope, oh, wrong button, sorry about that. on-demand feature from Thinkorswim, so I can go back in time. That doesn't do me any good. Going back in time never made anybody any money. Um, so let's look at, uh, we're, we're, we care about the future. So uh, in the Great British Pound, once again, this is another example of if you missed the breakout, you didn't catch the retest. Uh, this was our short breakout on the Great British Pound. And some of you, I hope, are still riding this thing as it's continuing to go down. I know I do this video on a daily basis, but it doesn't mean that you as a trader have to just stay in these things for a day. Uh, you know, this was our breakout short on the pound and it's continued a, a pretty strong move since then. 
you've got the patience to hold on to it, you're doing very well with it. Japanese yen, we've still got our area up above here. Uh, the Japanese yen is not showing the same weakness as the uh, as the other currency markets at this time. Uh, HG, so our copper trade price came into here, and this is the way we want to see an arrival. We're not seeing a great reversal yet. You may or may not have been stopped out on it. If we do continue this move out of here, I, I like these lower wicks, so there is some strength potential kind of coming out of it, so we'll see if that one continues to make its move. So as far as today goes, uh, we are uh, still just looking at the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ. I think, like I said, there's a potential for a, a little reversal trade down here. Um, but all in all, I don't know if we're going to get a tremendous amount of movement today uh, as we're still kind of in between areas. It's really the currencies that are giving us the better movements today. So thanks so much, everybody. If you got any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email, chuck at iiefinancial.com. Uh, tomorrow's video will be out a bit later in the day as I am uh, flying a red eye home from California. I'm, uh, I'm in LA with some with some meetings, and I'll uh, I'll I'll be back uh, back home tomorrow at some point. So certainly I'll be landing when I would normally be recording. So I'm not sure what uh, what time we'll get the video out tomorrow. But thanks so much for joining us, and uh, see you all soon. Later.